The dates are out and all eyes are firmly set on the 10th of March. Spread through seven phases, this election is shaping up to be like no other. As always, we have a great episode lined up for you, so stick with us. Nothing beats the drama of UP politics and this week has seen some sort of an exodus from the BJP. Now, while party hopping and leader shopping is part of the game, this mutiny could spell serious trouble for Yogi Adityanath and the BJP as this is the revolt of the backward caste. The revolt led by Swami Prasad Maurya could seriously singe BJP's caste calculations in the state. Maurya is a powerful OBC leader and a five-time MLA. It's on his cue that a dozen MLAs from BJP as well as two other ministers jumped ship to the Samajwadi party. OBCs account for 50% of the population of Uttar Pradesh and a revolt of the subaltern could cause some serious cracks in the consolidated Hindu vote. The subset of this, Yadas, comprise 9% and the Kushwahas, to whom Swami Prasad Maurya belongs, comprise of 6%. Yogi Adityanath describes the UP contest as one between 80% and 20%. Simply put, between Hindus versus Muslims. What would it mean if its OBC vote bank were to collapse? Also, Maurya, who exercises his main area of influence in Eastern UP, could be detrimental for BJP's Purvanchal push, who are looking east in order to cut the losses from farm anger in the west. The BJP has been working consistently and very hard to cultivate an OBC vote bank since the 1990s when it projected Kalyan Singh as its face in the state. Over the past decade, it has also managed to shed the image of being a Brahmin Baniya party and work towards creating a more consolidated Hindu vote bank. But that seems to be slipping. Couple that with the reported resentment amongst the Brahmins over Yogi's alleged Thakur Raj, and it could all spell a lot of trouble. Akhilesh Yadav, on the other hand, has formed an umbrella caste coalition with strategic alliances across regions. So many leaders of the same caste congruence deserting the BJP on the eve of the polls dents Yogi Adityanath's personal image as well as his rising stocks within the BJP. This is a clear case of no confidence against a chief minister who has long faced allegations of authoritarianism as well as favouring Thakurs at the cost of other castes. And lastly, this OBC mutiny may blunt the edges of BJP's Hindutva campaign that's centred on Mandirs and Muslims as it threatens the very idea of a tenuous Hindu vote bank. Despite all the upheaval that the BJP had to see this week, it cannot be ruled out because Prime Minister Modi himself comes from a backward caste. And while the Saffron Party has been going through some troubled waters, it does firmly have a strategy in place, as do all other major players in this election. Today in EJ In-Depth, we take a deep dive into what political parties have planned for the UP elections. So on 7th March, all polling will be over and the date of counting is 10th March 2022. The bugle has been sounded for the UP Mahabharat. Heavy artillery has been rolled out as the campaign reaches a feverish pitch. So where do all the rival camps stand? What are their strategies for the big battle? First, the defender, Yogi Adityanath. The BJP has been banking on the appeal of its two prominent faces, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. The real double engine that BJP hopes will see it through anti-incumbency. Sensing trouble in western Uttar Pradesh, the Saffron Brigade is focused on Purvanchal. To make up for the likely losses in the west, the BJP is fronting the Purvanchal Vikas model of swanky highways, medical colleges and mega-projects. The party has also kept its alliance with the Apna Dal and Nishad party who have pockets of influence in eastern Uttar Pradesh. 
The BJP has also launched a big Brahmin outreach to change the Yogi Ignored Brahmin's narrative. Then there is a tired and tested Hindutva plank. The very overt Hindu tone, texture and tenor of the campaign is also peppered with sometimes covert and sometimes over anti-Muslim rhetoric. The chief minister has already said that it is the 80 versus 20 battle. The poll for the BJP is set in the Mandir Muslim matrix. Perhaps it's this keen focus over religious lines that has preoccupied the party and created space for the exodus of OBC leaders. Triggered by the resignation of Swami Prasad Maurya, former minister in CM's cabinet, several OBC leaders have quit alleging neglect and lack of respect by the government towards backward castes and Dalits. Can challenger Akhilesh Yadav break through the BJP game plan? The Smajwadi party chief is going all out in the campaign challenging the Modi Shah Yogi Trimurti single-handedly. Big rallies, witty repartee and alliances, Akhilesh is at it all guns blazing. From west to east, he has stitched up alliances to tilt the caste balance in SP's favour. With Jayant in the west, OP Rajbar and Kesha Moria in the east, Uncle Shifpal back in the SP camp and an almost assured Muslim vote in a bipolar SP vs BJP match, Akhilesh is attempting to track Yogi in his caste chuck review. OBC leaders who quit BJP and joined him are likely to add one more solid layer to this Chuck review. The SP chief has also arrived at a tactical understanding with the new entrant Aam Admi Party. While all the big guns are out, Elephant is refusing to come out of the room. Where is Mayavati? What is her strategy? Is she even in the mood to contest? The recluse BSP chief is the biggest mystery of this election season. She's not holding rallies, is not seen on the ground and there is near zero buzz around the Queen of Dalits. The talk of a revival of the famed Dalit Brahmin Alliance of 2007 seems just that as of now. Talk. Will the sleepy pachyderm shake itself out of slumber and march into the battlefield or will quietly go into the night? We are as interested in knowing as you are. Maya's silence and absence from the poll season are stark when compared to the zeal and euphoria in the Congress camp. The grand old party is out of power in the state for over three decades but doesn't seem to ever give up. Led by Priyanka Gandhi, the Congress is punching well above its weight in Uttar Pradesh. The party is trying to woo women to ride to power. With the Women Specific Manifesto, promised to give 40% tickets to women and Priyanka as the face, Congress is trying hard to rise from its ashes. Another force testing political waters in Uttar Pradesh is Asaduddin Ovasi's AIM IM. The Hyderabad MP is campaigning heavily in Muslim concentrated areas with the stated aim of developing Muslim leadership in the state. While BJP has dubbed AIMIM as SP's B team, the opposition camp has dismissed it as just a vote cutter. Now we all know that it's common for parents to worry about their children getting kidnapped. Here, the story got just a little bit reversed. On Tuesday, BJP MLA Vinay Shakya's daughter alleged that her father had gone missing amid rumours that he was quitting the BJP and joining Samajwadi Party. Now, in the end, it was much ado about nothing because Mr. Shakya himself said that he was okay. This week's Noob Joke is less political and more of family drama. क्योंकि चुनाव नजदीक हैं हम लोग क्षेत्र में लगातार लोगों से संपर्क बढ़ा रहे हैं इसी बीच हमारे चाचा श्री देवेश शाक्य व हमारी दादी मेरे पिताजी को लखनऊ लेकर चले गए हैं इस समय मेरे पिताजी की स्थिति ठीक नहीं है वे कहां हैं किस हालत में हैं हमें कोई जानकारी नहीं है आप स्वामी प्रसाद मौर्य के साथ हैं if this week's episode tells us anything about UP's politics, it's that it's rich and complicated. Which is probably why, when it comes to the state's contribution to national politics, it truly leaves everyone behind. We have been saying it for a while and we will say it again. UP's politics dictates the larger shape the nation's democracy takes is a fact that no one can deny. 
Did you know that UP has provided 9 of the 15 prime ministers to the nation? Jawaharlal Nehru from Phoolpur, Dal Bahadur Shastri from Allahabad, Indra Gandhi from Raibareli, Chaudhary Charan Singh from Bathpat, Rajiv Gandhi from Amethi, VP Singh from Fatehpur, Chandrasekhar from Balia, Atal Bihari Vajpayee from Lucknow and Narendra Modi from Varanasi. India's first female Prime Minister was also from Uttar Pradesh. In independent India's first general election, Jawaharlal Nehru contested from a Uttar Pradesh constituency. That brings us to the end of yet another episode of Chunao Pe Charcha. Election heat is rising and we're up for the challenge. Stay tuned as we bring you our new election hot takes week after week.